In my book, I explored the reasons why 18th century common soldiers, soldiers who served in the armies like the army of Frederick the Great of Prussia, or the Habsburg Empress Maria Theresia of Austria, the first three Georges in Britain, or Louis XV in origin France, what, uh, uh, what uh, uh, prompted this men, these men uh, to take military service? that is, to enlist in the military, uh, what caused them to remain in the army, to continue serving, and perhaps the most interesting question in all, uh, what was the reason why they fought? Uh, the common perception is uh, negative. Um, it's a combination of a number of reasons, social prejudice, elite bias, revolutionary rhetoric and historical memory. So to begin with, um, the lives of uh, young men um, from lower class background in origin Europe were usually predetermined for them by their families or by their communities. Uh, to enlist voluntarily into the army was usually a brazen, brazen individualistic act which uh, rejected the authority of your parents and the will of your immediate social milieu. And consequently, civilians have seen common soldiers in a very bad light. Uh, they were considered to be disobedient sons, uh, lazy workers, uh, deserting fathers, uh, jailbirds, all the bad things you can imagine. Uh, then came elite views. The armies were at that time commanded by almost exclusively a noble officer corps or perhaps members of the upper middle classes. Uh, these men could have had very positive relations with their soldiers, but when they wrote about them, this was the age of enlightened, polite discourse. And according to the views of the time, common people were expected to show the wildest traits, traits of human character. And as a result, officers, whatever they might have thought about their men, when they will write about them, those would usually be bad things. Then comes the French Revolution, and the French politicians and generals like to think of themselves as if they're emancipating the common men. The French had an army of citizen soldiers, soldiers who fought because they cared, because they fought for revolutionary ideology or for the French nation. And as, and as the French liked to see it, they were beating the, sla the slave robots sent against them, soldiers who were led into battle by the stick, so to say. And this is also how the French have described it. And now comes the modern historian, based on all this set of evidence, both contemporary as well, and as well as what the French wrote, comes to the obvious conclusion. Uh, old regime common soldiers didn't want to fight, and if they did, their motivation was negative. They were fight, they would fight because they were forced to. The situation across Europe was, of course, not, uh, not identical. Um, cultural feuds will come to the fore in some conflicts, for instance, the wars between England and France all, over the, all across the 18th century, as well as later. Uh, in Eastern Europe, for instance, um, the war between Prussia and Russia as part of the larger Seven Years' War, it, went, it escalated to the way of national hatred. Uh, nevertheless, um, nevertheless, in spite of these uh, differences, I think uh, this is superseded by what was essentially a common military culture for these men. Um, Origin common soldiers saw themselves primarily as fighting for a just and good cause. It is something which they, was very important for them. 
they uh, considered the authority of their officers to be legitimate. Uh, the officer had the right, not only as a military superior, he also had the moral right to lead them into battle and, if necessary, lead them to death. They had this authority and it was not questioned. And finally uh, came camaraderie. Uh, the view that as long as the other soldiers fight, you will fight as well. And if you wouldn't do it, um, you are worse than a criminal, you're a traitor, you, you're not a real man, uh, you are not, um, you're not a, a wholesome human being. Um, and it was this fear of shame in front of your equals, in front of the other soldiers, which trumped even fear of battle. And my view, this is the root cause of uh, combat motivation in 18th century Europe, I would also say in other periods as well. Previous scholarship has largely studied uh, the experience of common soldiers in the period through the words of others, through the memoirs of their officers, the writings of elite civilian observers, or through administrative documents of the type you find in big state archives. What I try to do in my book is to, to investigate their experience through their own words as much as possible. I uh, looked and searched and found uh, memoirs, journals, diaries, letters, what we would call uh, autobiographical writing or ego documents as much as possible, I tried, I, I, I tried to understand the experience of these men through their own words. Well, one of the re one of uh, one of the reasons why the subject wasn't really studied before was the view, and this is of course based on the negative perception of these people, that uh, origin common soldiers must have been all illiterate. And if there were a few exceptional cases of literate men, they didn't write anything worthwhile. And if perhaps they did write something, then of course it didn't survive. So when I started this research, I was told straight away it's a high-risk project. Uh, it might as well be that you won't find anything. And it turns out that uh, plenty of material exists. Um, for this book, I have uh, I have uh, I have located uh, over 250 individual uh, sources by soldiers from 15 different European countries. Uh, an incredibly diverse set of evidence. Uh, it was written by privates and NCOs. Uh, uh, so uh, veterans who served many years and soldiers who served just a short time, uh, war participants, men who served only in peacetime, men who served in one army, uh, men who served in a number of armies, uh, a number of women as well who masqueraded as men. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a subject which deserves uh, a book in its own right. And, and a very diverse set of evidence, and perhaps uh, what is most important is, this is just the tip of an iceberg. There is much more material out there which needs to be found and needs to be consulted. It would be a, a very rewarding subject indeed. Well, the view of uh, 18th century common soldiers was largely negative, and while historians today will not necessarily repeat it into grimmest terms, their understanding still remains largely simplistic. Uh, what um, I hope that my book shows that there were complex people, opinionated people, which had a lot to say about their own experience, about the events in which they were, uh, they were participating in, the wars they were taking part in. And what I 
hope my readers will take from this book. Um, if not empathy as such, I hope at least they will show more understanding to one of the largest and if, the, if not the most vilified, at the very least the most misunderstood group of people in early modern Europe.